Hello everybody. I made a video several years back about the first mass-produced electric helicopter. It was called the Skylark EH-1, EH meaning electric helicopter, and the first by Ishimasa in Japan. It ran on NICADs, and that's because that's all we had back then. Well, it had a very unreliable mechanical rheostat for speed control and used a simple bell hiller head with a fly bar. It only ran about one and a half minutes on a battery, but it actually flew. If you search my channel for the Skylark EH-1 first electric helicopter, then you'll see uh, more flying of it, untethered. The blades get out of track pretty easy, and sometimes it would vibrate a lot, interrupting the power to the motors when that wiper jumped off that rheostat. Well, about that time, Novak and Victor Engineering were making a lot of electronic speed controls, but uh, they wouldn't work for it so good because these two big 540s, they'd just burn them right up. Well, finally, Victor Komosek, the owner of Victor Engineering, designed the one that could take the amps from running on a 12-volt tether. Well, Vic later designed for me the electronic speed control that I used when I was making the ETRM prototypes. Also used them on this machine as well. And when I proved it successful, I sent the tape to Ishimasha in Japan, and the rest is history as Kyosho absorbed them, and, and uh, now ETRMs are in everything. You see, I had so much trouble with the slipping tail drive belt that I never had a good tail rotor ever. And that's why I began experimenting with the electric tail rotor motor. And then the Notar all of a sudden came along just because I just decided I didn't even need a tail rotor. <laughs> anyway, back in the 70s, I began demonstrating and selling these uh, EH1s for Cliff Rosin. He was the owner of Condor Hobbies in Costa Mesa, California. And uh, we sold those first EH1s. This was in 1978, 37 years ago. Well, as I was looking at some of the old tapes, I found some of the early footage, this including the first indoor flight and the first electric heli ever flown at MCAS Tustin Helicopter Station during the 1979 Toys for Tots RC Air Show. But to tell you, I like flying on the tether. It also kept the helicopter within range so I couldn't get out of range. And because the battery weighed so much, it flew much more easier with more power and flew longer. The tether was a special silver silicone wire that had very low impedance but needed 12 volts to fly this. The flight pack battery, though, was 9.6. Well, seeing all those old memories had me deciding to try it today to fly my quad and my Falcon 40 helicopter on a tether. There's better wire available and it could be made lighter, but all I could get here in time was 18 gauge uh, speaker wire, which works fine. And I'm going to show you that the Skylark EH-1, the world's first electric radio control model helicopter can be flown in my office, which I fly quite often in a very tight little space here where I trim things out and try to check it out. Here's a Skylark EH-1 with orange floats on it. Of course, you can see how rugged they are with the floats, so I could do that with a regular helicopter with me.
there you are, sport fans, the Skylark EH-1, the world's first truly electric radio-controlled model helicopter. Okay, well, this is a bad idea. As soon as the tail rotor hit the water, glug, glug, glug. Well, this is the day that I learned that you need to put a float on the tail rotor skid. Okay, now I'm going to try it on the Falcon 40 Heli. The tether's 10 feet long, it's 18 gauge speaker wire, and the battery's 7.4 volt, 1800 milliamp. Okay, now my tethered spaceship quad from Nitroplanes. It's three feet of wire, a single 3400 milliamp cell, 3.7 volt, I just had to try it. It's good practice and I actually can fly more than an hour on this battery. <laughs> 